Yes! Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm Dana Wilson. This is Dexter Carr. Hi, y'all. And this is Words That Move Me on CLI today. On CLI. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited to be here with you. I'm so excited to be here with you. So. Okay. Um, really, I can talk for um, at great, great lengths <laughs> and at great speeds I'm learning. I'm kind of a fast talker as well. And I have a lot of questions. I want to I wanna know so much about you. Let's do it. So why don't we start at, like, the beginning of dance cool. for Dexter. Cool. Weird to use the third person when you're right in front of me. Maybe it's okay. I like it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I I heard that you are the first in your family to have a musical inclination or like a rhythm bone in your body. Yes, first How and last, I think. First and last. <laughs> <laughs> no signs of a follow-up. <laughs> no signs of a follow-up. Yeah. Um, um, how'd you find it? I was born in uh, Miami, Florida, um, and my family is all in Florida. So Tallahassee, Tampa, Ocala, all the. State, all the cities in Florida, and um, we are very uh, business people. So people are insurance agents, people are marketing people, just all that brain, and I was not that brain. So uh, I started at I started a really kind of like late age, I guess, for dance, uh, 13. Right, relative and, uh, to you know, the three yeah, years yeah, yeah. old. I'm, I'm old, yeah. consider it, <laughs> starting as a dancer. Um, right. And I just really dove into it. I was so obsessed with every dance movie I saw, every – Every music video I saw, every live performance I saw, I was just obsessed. Like, I couldn't get it out of my head. And even in school, while studying, you know, doing the academic thing, I just still couldn't get dance or music or art off my brain. Amazing. So, yeah. What has changed, if anything? I don't think anything has <laughs> changed. <laughs> Family still does business. Family still does business, and I still don't. So you, yeah, You still don't. Exactly. Although, I would argue with you on that. Ah. I think that you have a strong business thread woven into your creative yeah. mind. Yeah. Um, Thanks, y'all. <laughs> right, right. That's in there. Um, and I do want to talk about that. Um, actually, maybe that's a good segue right now. Yeah. I think that you are like this bright, shining example of how you can use social media. Yeah as like a 24 seven round the clock storefront yeah. and audition. Yeah. And you actually you call it by those words. Yeah. Like it's, a, it's an audition tape yeah. when you create a piece, whether it's a combo intended to be taught in class or yeah. kind of a concepty thing, you put it on Instagram and you at mention or hashtag the artist right. and you ask people in comments to do the same. Right. And it seems like, from the outside looking in, and please stop me if I'm wrong, yeah. that you've seen you've covered a lot of ground in a relatively short amount of time yeah. by working that way. So, what do you think are the advantages, or what have you learned from auditioning right. on Instagram? Right. I um, at, from the beginning, I think Instagram has been such an awesome tool for every industry, uh, not even just the dance industry, for every industry to be able to get your voice, your product, your idea out to a large audience of people at a rapid speed is like the flyest thing ever, right? Yeah. Um, and with me, I've always thought that I wanted to perfect my art. Like that was my thing. Like I didn't want to put anything out there that was just kind of wild or just not together or whatever the case is. <laughs> to my standards, you know what I mean? Because uh -huh. art's subjective. But to my standards, I wanted it to be ready. And once I started realizing that you could put together a piece, you could put together a combo or whatever the case is and have it shown to the artist, whether they like it or not, they're gonna appreciate just the effort alone of you creating to their music, you know right. what I mean? So I kind of used that idea and just kept kept going with it and really just used my own creativity and all the ideas that I had to just keep posting. I love this. Yeah. I kind of love the idea of like making somebody a love letter. Yeah, It's exactly. way, way more romantic than like the sterile, yeah, the like audition, like the formal. And presentation and things. Right, and right. it's like, you want to see what I, you want to see how I feel to your music. You want to see what your music makes me feel. So I want to show you that in the best way I know how. <laughs> I love this. And then it li they think that like the secret bonus there is that it lives there yes. forever yes. versus an audition, even if it is a self tape, has like this moment, right? right, Where it's being watched right. and then it's on to and the then, next yeah. project or whatever. Absolutely. I love the, the kind of archiving of that and to see your relationship to music over time. Yeah. And then relationship to the music turns into relationship with people. Yes. So tell me how many how many times, like, could you give a ratio? How often has that been successful yeah. for you and, like, actually generating a working relationship? Yeah, it's been awesome. Uh, perfect example is, uh, so, uh, Tanache, uh, Die a Little Bit. I did the music video for that. and Big fan. <laughs> really big fan. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and, yeah, that came from 
me choreographing to one of her songs in class and the director reaching out to me and being like, hey, I saw this. I actually took your class. I had no idea she took my class. So that was also very nerve wracking, but I'm happy it went well. Wow. But, <laughs> so yeah, uh, she saw that video and she basically said, I think your style is what we want for this video and we would love to just have you come in and just start working. And it was literally like a seamless relationship off of that. So I, I know that it can sometimes seem strenuous and, and almost like, what am I really doing this for? And like, they're not going to see this or they don't really care about this. There's so many videos to this song. You just don't know what the label or artist or management or assistant, whoever, is going to see that video and say, okay, this I feel this. Like, this resonates with me. Yeah, I've seen 100, but this one resonates with me. You know what I mean? So why not give yourself that audition or that opportunity to, to show what you got? Right. Yeah. Because you can be one of the 100 or you could be the one on the other side of the screen that's looking at the 100 thinking, yep. I would have done it differently. I would have done it different. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And then you're regretting, like, well, dang, I wish I did it. But, you know, yeah. I, I think you're a great example of doing it, like yeah. just doing it. If something speaks to you, do it. Yeah. Super cool. Thank you. Um, I want to circle back to something mm -hmm. that you mentioned that I think um, I know I relate to, and I'm assuming that listeners do as well. Yeah. Um, dancers, I think, might be more subjective to the syndrome I call perfectionism. <laughs> and it's, I honestly, most of the dancers I know are perfectionists. Yeah. With their craft, in their life, yeah. in their, you know, in their home spaces and, yeah. and in all sorts of different areas in your life. Um, do you think that applies to you? A hundred percent. Inside and outside 100%. of this? <laughs> and, and, I, and I have to say that it's, so I am a fan of, of you and Ava's and Brian Friedman's and Jerry Slaughter's and Marguerite Derrick's and y'all are perfect to me. And you know what I mean? It is what it is. I've just always thought that, 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 that group of dancers, that class of dancers was perfect, whether, you know, we have our own notes for ourselves or not, but I have always strived to make my work look like that or feel mm. like that or, or, mm. or, or come across like that. Uh. And I think that, it's not going to be perfect. It's never going to be perfect. It, 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 As much as we would love it to be perfect, it will never be perfect. But I think there's nothing wrong with working hard and striving for a level of satisfaction within yourself that you feel good about it. You know what I mean? Like not posting it and being like, oh, my God, I want to. I'm going to delete it, I'm going to delete it, I'm going to delete it, I'm going to delete it. And then you put it away. You know what I mean? Like, oh, you're right. definitely yeah, guilty. Right. We've all done definitely it. It's guilty. cool. But, like, sometimes it's cool to be like, all right, I like that. I like that. And then just being, like, content. Yeah, of course right. you're going to watch it back and be like, oh, my God, my pinky's out of place. But exactly. It is what it is, and it's it's art. It's art. It's supposed to make – and you have also no idea what it's going to make somebody in, like – in, in like the mountains in Iceland, how it's going to make yeah. them feel. Just seeing yeah. your passion, seeing your movement, seeing your joy, like just that alone is kind of what makes me also keep putting out content too or posting things or doing things just because there's so many people, especially right now, who need joy and just a little bit of something. You know what I mean? And and if you could be a part of that or a, a, a tribute to that, why not? Yeah. You know? Even if it's your imperfect Literally, thing yeah. that's being that for yeah, someone. Exactly. Because just like art is subjective, I would argue that so is perfection. Yes, exactly. Because a thing that's squeaky, squeaky, totally, perfectly, like, Apple design yes. perfect isn't really that interesting. Yes. It's not that perfect because yeah. my perfect right. is human. Right. Like, I want to see a fingerprint on right. it with some, like, glue dripping yes, out of the edge or, yes. like, a scratch, a scuff, like, yeah. something, something that shows that it's human and useful yes. instead of, like... You know, completely veneered, pristine, and right. polish is a little, right. a little less interesting to me. Um, so I love that you make space. Like you, there's a difference between striving for perfection yeah. and requiring, demanding perfection yes. before you ship something. Exactly. And I'll just tell myself, like, I'll, you know, how we, we go through like eight different moves, and then you kind of just go back to that same move. I'm just like, okay, Dexter, just do it. Just do the move. Just do it because you like it. So just mm. do it. So that's how how it ends I'm up. I am like <laughs> number one move rejector. Oh my gosh, <laughs> the inner battle in my head. I yeah. talk about myself like a horrible person in my head. Like I just go in on myself and then I'm like, no, 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 no. We're good. Can I tell you what it was that made that helped me? Well, that hurt me in that discussion. Yeah. I started learning about art, like um, sculpture, painting, yeah. architecture, stuff like this. And this notion that there is no such thing as a neutral stroke. Like in, uh, if we're talking painting, it either contributes yes. or it takes away. Yeah. And those words got emblazoned upon my mind and they made it very hard for me to create dance because I found myself like, you know, in a in a kickball change yep. prep. Yep. Like I'm preparing yep. for the turn and yep. I'm like, 
Okay, is the prep yeah. taking away? Is it contributing? How can it contribute more? We're talking up prep. Yeah. Like, it's just yeah, preparation. Just do it. Let alone like, the whole <laughs> dance. So I got I got very caught up about this idea of neutrality yep. in dance steps, like there not being a neutral stroke. And um, I did sort of wind up releasing that, yeah. and now I definitely feel like what's neutral to me. Yeah might not be to someone else. Yes. It might be their favorite, most impactful, most oh poignant gosh. moment. And to me, I'm like, oh no, it's just because I needed to get my weight on exactly. my left leg. I just want to transition, y'all. That's, <laughs> <laughs> That's so interesting. Yeah. Um, okay, gentle segue mm -hmm. for, a quick, for a quickness, um, because I would be very not okay with myself if I let us talk forever and not mention this. Mm -hmm. Can we talk style for a second? Yeah. Clothing. I know it's important to you because yes. you have your own clothing line, yes. but I think it's important to all dancers. Yeah. The way that things look and yes. feel on your body yes. can really inform the way that you move. 100%. So I, I want to hear as much as you want to tell us about the clothing line, cool. where it came from, what you hope to achieve. How do you design it? How right. does it get to people? I mean, I have all the questions. All the things. Yeah. Go, go for it. So I, um, about two years ago, I started with uh, just an idea. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, would be, I had been teaching at Playground for, at that point, a year, and I had just met so many incredible people and people from around the world were coming into LA and taking class and just talking to them and hearing their experiences or just like, I don't know, just getting some sort of insight about things that were going on around the world that I wasn't privy to being in LA. And even when we travel, you're there for what, a weekend, a week? You don't really get to, you know, feel the mm -hmm. energy of other places. And people were just talking about their style and, you know, seeing people come into class and what they were wearing, just everything was just sparking my brain. Yes. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I hadn't taught a regular class in L.A. before I started teaching at Playground, so I would see dancers here and there, but it was like the ones we knew, like the ones you work with or yes. the ones that are on the job, yes. whatever. But to see different people coming in and out, like different like hairstyles. Submerged different, oh in it, God. weekly returning, yes, studying. Yes, exactly. And mm -hmm. like how they would change and how their style would develop too, it just inspired me. So I thought about how can I get kind of my steez out to the world yeah. in in a in a non cheesy way if that makes sense. That uh, actually <laughs> is really the hard part. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah. how do you create a thing that's authentically yes. you that's made for many? Mass produced. You yeah. know what I mean? That's yeah. hard, right. and that is literally my still to this day my biggest like battle when Challenge. it comes to myself. Yeah, yeah. because. I don't want it to be corny. I don't want it to be whack. And I think there, you know, everything has its place and everything has its, you know, corny is cool sometimes, whack is cool sometimes, but I want it to feel like it's gen like literally coming from me, given mm -hmm. to you. So that is really my main point in designing all this stuff. I, if, if, is it something that I want to wear? Is it something that I would wear? Is it something that I would want to see somebody else wearing? If I saw somebody walking down the street, would I go, oh, that's interesting? Like, because that happens too, but you know what I mean? I right. want it to be... Interesting, interesting. being code yeah, for... Yeah, interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I wanted it to be real. I want it to be authentic. So I um, got an awesome team, uh, which is based in Vancouver, and they reached out to me on Instagram, another Instagram great moment. Uh -huh. um, and they basically said, I want to help you. I want to help you design this clothing line. I want to help you. I want to help you get your voice out larger than it already is. And, uh, in the form of a hoodie. In the form of a hoodie. <laughs> exactly. you know? And that developed into me just literally going into every website that I loved, every clothing line that I loved, and just like getting inspiration, like looking around at stuff, watching people in the street. I was probably staring at so many people. They had no idea why. I love But this. I was just going like this and just staring at people what they're wearing, like how their sweatpants fit, yeah, how their yeah. hoodies fit. Like if it does that weird thing where it goes inside. You know, you already know. I already know you know what I'm talking about. But like the fit, like everything. And I'm so big on fit and, and like, the way things drape when I dance, too. Because, you know, a bad outfit will, I mean. <laughs> oh, make or break. It will Not be even end. a bad outfit. I'm wearing the wrong socks. I and I'm having a, it's I, ridiculous. Literally, right. You it's see one sock, like, over. up here and then one sock. It's just all the things. <laughs> all the things. So. So particular. Everything was, uh, everything was a factor in, in that. And I pretty much spent the whole first year of just the development process, designing, thinking about ideas, Yes, no, absolutely not. Maybe, okay, fine, we'll do that. That whole process took pretty much a year. Mm -hmm. And then they came up with an idea um, and said, well, what about tutorials? And I was like, oh, that's a good idea, like too. Dance, like dance, dance tutorials. tutorials. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's a good idea, too, right? People do want to dance, right? That's what they want to do. Right, so especially your it's, audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So why not? Like, we'll do a tutorial uh, option, too. So that then took six, four months trying to figure out the software and the this. Oh, and the, the conversations. 
you already know. So, and so much learning. That I'm learning about, like, hosting sites and coding and this and that. Like, I'm, who knew that I would ever even need to know any of this stuff? But I'm so happy that I do now. So just, cool. you know, for my own sake. And then now we've kind of transitioned into this apparel plus tutorials plus, you know, masterclass, like, podcast thing. And it's it's awesome. It's uh, I have an app on the App Store. It's called Outlet by Dexter. Burr, 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 burr. Burr, burr, burr. <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's been awesome. It's been a learning process for me, honestly. And yeah. I'm still learning every single day about what people want, about what, you know, what people are interested in, what people like, what people don't like. Mm. What, do, what, what do people need? What should people have more of? Because I think whenever you're putting out a... A product, and that's even your art. As far as a choreographer, what are you? Are you helping the situation? Are you giving people what they need? Are you giving people what they should be seeing? As far as also doing the job you're supposed to do, but like you can push the envelope too a little bit and kind of yeah. add your voice, amplify your voice a little bit, and say, "Hey, I love this song or I love this idea, but I think it'd be really dope if we, you know what I mean? Ooh. If you have the freedom to do that, but yeah, right. You check the temperature. Yeah, check the temperature. Check, of the check room. The temperature yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's awesome. This kind of idea of there's there's learning that you can do that's free, yeah. right? You sit on a park bench and you just watch the way people's clothes yes. fit yes. and how they move. Or yeah. you, you know, as you're teaching, you have this, like, sub um, uh, agenda of, yes. like, watching watching what people tend towards in yes. terms of clothing. And that's all free learning. Yeah. And then you find a team yeah. that presents you with ideas and then you learn together. Yep. I think that's a really awesome thing to do. And yeah. I think in terms of teams, yeah. if you don't mind talking a little bit more about, like, could you have done this by yourself? What parts are all you? Right. What parts are supplemented by by the team? Right. I, I can say that I could have. I do think it would have taken a lot longer, and I don't think that I would have because my brain is, like I said before, I'm very like, ah, and then I come up with the decision later. But I think they've helped me kind of say, Dexter, it's fine. We're mm-hmm. going to go with this. Uh-huh. Dexter, stop overthinking. It's cool. We're going to go with this. The this decision-making is, yes, step, the decision-making sure. process those yeah. that are like kind of nitpicky with just, you know, we get a little nervous about, is this going to be oh, like corny? Sure. Is this going to be well-received? That would have taken me longer as far as producing. So I'm okay. just happy. That is leading me to another question. Yeah. Um, do you have any awesome decision making techniques? Ah. Like what is do you have a golden rule that's like must be boom boom or else no? Okay. Um as far as the clothing line? Yeah. Or, oh yeah, okay. So as far as the, as far as the clothing line, if <laughs> we've and not at this point come up with a majority rule situation, so there's ten okay. of us on the team. Okay. Get to, get so to now vote. we have it's a voting a system. So <laughs> I'm usually always the one that's like, no, and everyone else is like, yes, and I'm like, all right, fine. But um that's kind of on the stuff that is more so like geared towards kids or geared towards like the the merch side Mm -hmm. and um i'm always like well no we need more this and we need more that and they're like no one's buying floral on a hoodie and i'm like okay cool like just me fine fair i'll take that i'll take that one can i can you make me one and i'll just have (laughs) it Um. that's cool that you have the ability even on your own project something that's so individually yours to say i might not have all the information yes Yeah. yeah and and i and that's been a learning process for me because in our industry, we're always made to feel like we need to know everything. Like, right. you need to know all the union rules. You need to know all the hours that you've worked. You need to know all the, you know, you want to know the choreographer, the director, the DP. Like, you, we're always told that we need to be our own, like, superhero, which is also a dope quality to have. Right, it does help. It helps, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> and then it also helps to have people who do the marketing side or do the design side or do the fashion side or do the right. the the other things that you don't know how to do and give you a little input so you guys can put all your ideas together that's i mean teams there's n- nothing can be no no great great entity can be done without a team Correct. i don't unless if i unless it happens and i haven't seen it let me know but, i'm i'm telling you yeah. i think it ha- i think so often because we see on the scroll yeah. the face right and it's so often I mean, way more often than not, there is a team behind the face. And it will take that opportunity to shout out my team. Ayo. Malia Baker and Riley Higgins. Hi, hey, ho. Yeah, it really does take a village, especially in a creative effort. Absolutely. Um, Yeah, so many steps, so many many things to do. Um, Before we we segue out of clothing, whoa, don't take that the wrong way, people. (laughs) Um, Question. I'm sure a lot of people would aspire to start their own clothing line, yeah. do something similar. What advice would you give? Yeah, just design. Design. Make as many designs as you want, as many 
prototypes as you want. Go to downtown, get it printed on a T-shirt. Go to, you know, do whatever. Draw it yourself. Like, there's uh, Nick Baga, a really good friend of mine, literally just started his own. And it's started from his drawings. Like, cool. literally him drawing on a T-shirt. And they're so awesome. They're so cool. And just to see that it came from such, like, a, you know, a genuine, honest me just drawing on a T-shirt in my, my house to what he has now, it's so awesome to see. So I, I don't feel like, especially right now, everybody has the opportunity to do whatever they want. Everybody has the opportunity to do whatever we want. From from great tragedy comes great success, I think. And that is what we're all on right now. So if you have an idea, if you have a, a step you want to do, if you have a concept video you want to do, do it. Everybody just do it. That's I've been telling everybody that I know that. That's a beautiful yeah. sentiment. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, that reminds me of a saying that I call on often. Instead of fake it till you make it, I would much prefer to make it till I make it. Till I just make like it. Make your yeah. thing. Make your thing. You got it. I love this. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, talked about Instagram. Talked about clothing brand. Mm -hmm. I, in my plan, which mm -hmm. I swerved from a little bit, <laughs> I thought that the audition story of Instagram could segue nicely into your experience with Broadway Ooh. and music videos and film. Mm -hmm. um, okay, you are original cast member of Bring It On, correct? I am. Little known fact, I, I helped Andy Blank and Beeler skeleton crew, not for the entire process, but Stop. several days of skeleton crew. So it's very possible that we danced the same moves Stop. for that show. Is that wild? Yeah. So just another example of like things crossing over awesome. without you knowing. Without you knowing, yeah. Right. Yeah. That's um, awesome. So what was your audition experience like for that? <laughs> Oh, good. I've, I've hit a, a kernel, have I? <laughs> hey, Andy. Um, uh, it was, it was I mean, it was amazing. I had never auditioned for a, uh, a Broadway show before. Um, I, was, I was completely new to the, you know, we do musical theater at the studio, but mm -hmm. that's one number a year, like, or one <laughs> combination. Of, uh, for you, sure. You know what I mean? Yes. So when you go in and audition for a Broadway show eight times, you're not, oh, yeah. Eight times, and I was auditioning for a principal role too, so that okay. part was uh, that was a part the of that. The stakes are the stakes a are pretty bit high. higher, yeah. but I mean, learning four different combos, and they're not, none of them are the same. You know what I mean? All different styles, and you know Andy, he's a genius, so he's like he'll do everything, and you're just yes. like okay, tap and you. extremely yeah. detail oriented, and extremely detailed. If the books are not here on the chest, you're not getting the job. It's so incredible! It's awesome. <laughs> the and books would be the here books on the are chest. here. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's the detail. <laughs> um, but. It was the most amazing experience of my life. We so cool. went on tour first. Um, so that tour lasted a year. And then they came out to like, I don't even know where we were, in some random city in the Midwest. And they were like, so how many? And it was all, it was we were all young. Like there was like two people who had been on like, I think off Broadway, but nobody had been on Broadway yet. Uh -huh. So they came to like the like last show or something like that. And they were like, so what are you guys doing in the fall? And we were like, we don't know. Like everybody was like stressed. And they were like, well, you're going to Broadway. <gasps> and we just I remember flipping something, and we were just, I mean, 19 years old, to say that you're going to Broadway is like, I mean, who would have ever thought? Especially me, coming from where I came from, that was not in the projected goal at all. So that also kind of helped me realize, okay, there's something that could happen here. Like, you could really do something with your career here. And that was a really dope moment for me. So thank you, Andy and Lynn and everybody for giving me that moment that let me know, like, I can do this. Like, this is this is something that I never thought I would do in my wildest dreams. I had seen so many shows, like, on, you know, TV with their play or in New York, but being on stage, there was no way. I was like, there's no way. But there was a way. <gasps> there so. was a way. That's such a yeah. refreshing reminder to, yeah. to, to hear about trusting a path. Yeah. Right? And being open to what whatever it may turn into. It's down. <laughs> it was um, down. On my interview with Heather Morris, we talked a little bit about how pathways yeah. are less like, you know, a path on the ground and more like a tree. Right. Like you start climbing up the trunk and you could take that branch or you could take that branch. Yep. And that branch has little tiny branches that actually they also actually land, they kind, of, <laughs> kind of flirt with the other branch over there. Yeah. Um, and you wound up on Broadway. Yeah. So did Bring It On come first for you or In the Heights? Bring It On came first and then we did uh, Heights after that. And then that was another incredible experience because I did it with all the OGs. So, like, all the original cast members were kicking my butt, telling me when I was doing something wrong, telling Amazing. me when I was in the wrong window, telling me when I was coming out of the wrong wing. And I love that, Because they too. know this show. Oh, my god! in this show. Oh, my God. And it was just so dope to hear them talk about stories and, 
you know, like the first time that they performed that show and what it meant to them. And that's a very meaningful you know what project. I mean? And yes. that's that to be immersed in that with those people to be embraced into that family. Oh my God. That was incredible. That's that was awesome. incredible. That, so my Broadway experience was very, very special for me. Super for cool. Sure. I love hearing that. That's yeah. tremendously inspiring. Yeah. Um, Selfish question, because yeah. I'm curious. I worked on In the Heights um, with Chris Scott, yes. Ebony Williams, Emilio DeSalle, yes. and Eddie Torres Jr. and Princess. Okay. Our salsa gurus. Baby. Bananas. I know. Y'all are hitting it. Oh, they go Oh, off. I know. That club scene? Ah. Oh, I can't wait. Okay, so my selfish question is, what's your favorite number in In the Heights? Okay, so I have a story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> so... There's this number called It Won't Be Long Now. I'm sure you yep. know it. And then uh, me and Jose Luis, shout out, uh, we sit on the stoop and dance while Vanessa sings her song and does the things and da 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 So we usually were paying, playing cards, and mm -hmm. everybody who's been on Broadway knows that you're never doing what you're supposed to be doing on stage. Whenever you have a moment <laughs> on stage, you're always doing something else that you're not supposed to be doing. So I, we were playing our cards or whatever, and Jose Luis and the other uh, one of the other guys thought it would be funny to not really tell me when we're supposed to be getting up, because I wasn't paying attention. Because... I'm 19 years old on Broadway, and I'm just having a good time. So you, I'm just you playing gave cards. Yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm enjoying myself. I'm enjoying the set. <laughs> I went like, Claudia's coming out. I'm like, what's up? Like, it's a whole thing. And I'm playing my cards, and I don't even realize. I don't even know why, but I was looking down, and they had all gotten up and started the choreography. And now you're playing and I'm now solitaire playing card. on the Solitaire. <laughs> and solitaire with my job as well, because I may be getting fired at this point. So that was that's definitely always going to be my favorite number because of just that story and that... Uh, the yeah the the boys and just being around that environment but uh the club was major uh, and yes. then the fight at the it's club so and all that it's so yeah so good 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 stuff be on the lookout 2021 Ooh, in I the cannot heights wait to see i think you will love the trailer i, I haven't seen the whole thing but from everything i've seen i am very impressed and oh tremendously God. proud i cried at the trailer yeah i, literally cried I was at the very trailer. emotional yeah it's a beautiful story it needs to be told very important oh God. so excited by so it so awesome i'm so excited um on the subject mm -hmm. Do you have any dreams of returning to Broadway? And what do you think will be, what do you think Broadway will be looking like on the other side of coronavirus? Right. Um, my dreams are actually to choreograph a Broadway show. There it that is. That is my. There it is. That's my. I, I want to see that dream come true, my I, friend. Oh my God. It would make, it would literally like put a, another valve on my heart to do that. <laughs> literally just a triple. Yeah, yeah. Like that's what I would love. And honestly, you know what? I think. I think people are so thirsty and so hungry for the arts. I think that when we are safe and when it is allowed or whatever the conditions are, I think people will rush back to it. I think there's a need and a want and a desire for live connection and like connection period. Mm -hmm. And while, you know, as everyone's kind of has their own rules with this whole thing, it's we cannot have the same connection that we had. And I think that when we can again and it's safe and it's smart, I think people will want to get right back to the arts because that's what made that's what got people through this. Yeah. How many shows did we watch? How many? All the Netflix. How many times did we watch Hamilton? How many times did we like listen to the soundtracks? How many times did we listen to yeah. old albums? Like yeah. I've been literally rewatching Moesha for the past <laughs> three days, like just to feel that what I was feeling in those moments. Yeah. So I think. I think we'll be okay. I really do. Oh, there will be a calling for yes. more content for sure yeah. because we've reached the bottom. I have. I've definitely <laughs> yeah. reached the bottom, bottom of it. Okay, in our last couple minutes yeah. then, talk to me about the bottom. Yeah. Quarantine. What was the worst thing, hardest thing for you? Yeah. And what's the silver lining? What are you walking out? How are you walking out better? Yeah. Um, hardest thing for sure was not being able to teach my class, not being able to teach on Chaos My Convention, not being able to teach on just not being able to be around and do what I love with the people that I love. Mm -hmm. um, I really take my weekly class maybe a little bit too seriously, and I just love seeing these amazing people come in there and fight for their life and, and, and do what they love. And you see it on their face, and you see it in their body, and you feel it from their energy. And I missed that. Those first two weeks was, like, really hard. And then we kind of got that little, like, little teaser back and then they like <laughs> took it back Snatch from us back. but yeah i mean that was that's what i missed the most and that was the hardest for me mm -hmm. but i can't say and i don't think anybody will disagree with this i don't think anybody's been more productive that they have been in these past four or five months because if you don't if you didn't have a hustle before you have one now and if you weren't pushing hard before you push it hard now because when there's no other option to and when you have nothing but time 
if you choose not to, that's on you. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And I don't think anybody wants, nobody wants to fail. Nobody wants to just let things just right. kind of go downhill for them. Right. Everybody wants to get to that uphill battle. Everybody wants to get over that hill that we all have been kind of like, you know, <laughs> running towards since March. But I think it's, I've seen so many dope people start businesses and just, I've changed my hair 80 times and I've literally like. <laughs> get creative, yeah, get resourceful. You know, I've gotten like, I've just, I've had, I've had more ideas than I think I've ever had in the past, like three, four years of choreographing. So I think mm. there's there's a silver lining to all of this. And like I said before, nothing with tragedy comes success. And I think we're going to see success after this. Oh, so. yes, my friend. Yes. And on that, we will wrap it up. Yeah. You guys have a cypher to get to. Yes. Um, we have 107 degree heat out there to get <laughs> yes, to, to, get to. <laughs> on our way back home. Thank you so much Thank for you, talking Dana. to me today. I learned so much. I feel juiced. Yay. I'm excited. Thank you so much, Dana. Thank you. Yeah. Talk to you guys soon. Bye, y'all.